Um, the, this message is something that has just been going round and round in me for a long time, and it's not anything that I really developed on my own. It's something that um, I read in a book, which I'll be taking excerpts from, as well as, um, I mean, a lot of the things I've thought of, but then, of course, my husband is an invaluable aid in helping me organize my thoughts and throwing things in when I might miss something. So it's a conglomeration of different efforts that's brought me here this morning. I chose to title it, Know Your Enemy, Know Yourself. And there's a quote that I'd like to share with you guys. If you know the enemy and know yourself, you need not fear the results of a hundred battles. And um, the author of that quote is said to be um, Sun Tzu. He's a Chinese warrior. Oh, the art of war. The art of war from the sixth, around the sixth century BC. That's what they say anyway. And I, I felt comfortable titling my message uh, know your enemy, know yourself from his quote because I, I'm mindful of um, Hebrews 1 1 where it says that at various times and in various ways God spoke to the fathers through the prophets and um, many of Solomon's proverbs come from the Far East. Um, and then I'd like to add to that know God even as you are known. And um, as I was preparing this, it was striking me that we've always got, like Steve's talked about the two trees, we've always got two trees to eat from. We can eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And with all the studying and everything that someone does to prepare, it's easy to go down that vein because you start finding scriptures and you start, your head starts spinning and you start thinking, well, I want to say this and I want to say that. But I just, it was funny because I was kind of in a muddle and Steve was like, don't prepare that much. <laughs> he said, just share from your heart. What's in your heart is what's going to, you know, help. So that's, you know, that was good advice because I really feel like I wanted us to eat from the tree of life this morning and receive life from, um, you know, what the Lord is, the Spirit of the Lord is wanting to say to us this morning. And last night we read the entire chapter of Romans 7, which was like muddled up because today I think I would just pretty much like to simplify it. I'll, I'll just read, um, for what I will to do or what I want to do, I do not practice. But what I hate, that I do. You know, so he's going on like, you know, I want to do good stuff. I want to do this. I want to, but, but then I find myself doing stuff that I really, really don't want to be doing. And then by the end of the chapter, the very end of the chapter, he's, oh, wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from this body of death? Thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. You know, at the end of it, he kind of, he's swimming around in all this, you know, I do this and I don't want to do it and I'm doing this, you know, all this stuff I don't want to do, but the stuff I really want to do, I just don't do. And he finally gets to the point where he's like, how am I going to get out of here? Well, of course, Jesus, this is how I'm going to get out of it. You know? But there's one bit in there where he says there's another law, you know, there's, there's the good stuff inside of us. There's a lot, another law in my members. And in the Greek, the members actually means physical body. And I find this really, really interesting because I've had this notion, um, and this is kind of like, I guess it's my opinion, but I'm sort of backing it up with Proverbs 23, 7, where it says, as he thinks in his heart, so is he. It kind of, um, I'm going to go by a personal example for a minute, and you'll see where I'm going with it. I suffered with depression way back when I was a young person, in my late 20s. I suffered with it to the point where I would be on the sofa, incapacitated, not able to move, just a basket case, just, you know. I, and I was overcome with it, and I just would lay there. And one day, I just kind of said to God, um, you know, I, there's got to be, what, what can I do here? This is, I can't live like this. And, and the Lord sort of said, you're, you're absorbed in yourself, you got to get over yourself, and you've just got to, you'll get on with life if you can stop being so self-navel-gazing and self-absorbed. And I was like, ouch, <laughs> I didn't want to hear that, you know, it's like, I wanted him to say something, oh, poor baby, you know, you've got this and you've got that, and everything will be okay, and you know, just blah, 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 blah. And of course, this was back in the day when it wasn't so common to have, um, help medically, you know, so I wasn't seeking out medical help. It would, it would have been available, but it wasn't 
as prevalent as it is nowadays. So I, I ouched there. I kind of laid there and ouch, this doesn't feel good. I don't like to be kind of sort of like, I felt like I was being told off, you know. But then I stopped and I thought about it. And I thought, oh, well, maybe this is what it is, you know. I literally took steps, little ba baby steps, like that movie, What About Bob? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I took baby steps. And I tried day by day to do more, do more, do more. And just focus on other things rather than the things that were bothering me that, you know, I felt were all consuming. And I got out of it. And I employed, and the last thing you want to do when you're like that is praise the Lord. But that, of course, that's the prescription. Put on the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. The spirit actually being a spirit that torments. You're actually being tormented by spirit. It's not your imagination. Put on the garment of praise. Who wants to do that? I didn't want, I, that was the last thing I wanted to do. I did get to the point where I started to do that. I came out of it. And my point is, as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. I really think genetics change because I think thoughts are so powerful. I think my thought process was so powerful that it actually worked on screwing up my nervous system and the nerve synapses and all the things that they discovered. I didn't think it was the other way around. The body, the thoughts are so strong that I really think that they worked on the genetics. Now what I'm doing here is I'm laying a foundation for what I really want to say today and it's going to take a while to lay down the foundation so if you can just bear with me. But you know there's hope. Uh, anybody that might be listening to this or whatever that might have bouts with depression you know, and I'm not saying in all cases, I can't pontificate on this subject. I'm not qualified to pontificate on the subject. But I am qualified to say what happened in my life, and I am qualified to say that I think that scripture means that we could get ourselves so in a downward spiral that we actually, through the powerful thoughts we have, change our nerve synapses and change things that can actually spiral us downward and downward. Okay, so, you know, hopefully that will be of help to somebody or some people. Um, and I want to get into why Paul said some of the things he said in Romans 7. We'll be get, delving into that. But first, Romans 12, 8, Paul says, Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Don't be conformed to the ruler of, of this world. I think if we learn tools to, re have, you know, to help our minds regenerate, I think a lot of the things that we go through, we can actually... Put behind us, really. In 1 Corinthians 10, 13, does somebody have a Bible they can quickly nip to? And No temptation is overtaking you, but such as is common to man, and God is faithful, will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able, but with the temptation will provide the way of escape, also so that you will be able to endure it. Anytime you're tempted, tested, whatever, it's nothing that no, everyone in the whole world is we're not alone, in other words. We're not the only ones going through something. We might think that we've had the most horrible thought or we're the most horrible sinner, you know, that who could think such a, you know. Rest assured that probably at least a lot of people, if not most people, go through those same kind of thoughts, have temptations, have things that, you know, really bad stuff that they, in their mind, you know, I've had somebody tell me once before, you, you don't even want to know the stuff that goes through my mind, the stuff that I think. And I'm thinking, yeah, okay, you probably don't want to know what goes through my mind either, you know? <laughs> I mean, I really think that we, um, one of the things, one of the points that I want to reinforce as we go along is that we're not alone, that we all have things that we go through. And if we isolate ourselves, that's when we get in trouble. If we think, oh, you know, I'm in this little box, I cannot talk about this, I cannot deal with this, I'm just like the most horrible person that ever lived. You know, there's no hope for me because nobody else has ever thought this. This is like way out there. Rest assured, you're not alone. You're not alone. And God has provided the way of escape. And we're going to get into all this. You know, as we... All right, that was my intro. Now I want to lay a foundation. And the foundation is we need to understand what iniquity is. That's a word that we really need to be able to define and understand in order to go any further. Iniquity is the propensity to sin, not the sin itself. Sin is the acting out of iniquity. In Exodus 5, in the Ten Commandments, um, you know, that bit where everybody's making graven images and worshiping the work of their hands, um, God says that he's going to visit the iniquities of the fathers to the third and fourth generations of those who hate him. You know, that sounds, those who hate God. Well, 
what that means is, you know, they just don't want to bother with God. They, you know, you either hate him or you love him or you're indifferent to him. But if you're not following him, he's going to visit the iniquity of the fathers. Okay, so what that means is the iniquities of our parents, our grandparents, our great-grandparents are passed down to us. The propensity to have certain sins, we more veer in that direction than another, come down from the parents. Okay, we all have it. Nobody's exempt from it. It's not like, oh no, I've got this because my father or my grandfather. We've all got it. We've all, we've all got a set of things that we're more inclined to do more than, than others. We're all in it together, okay? You know, so before we start worrying about ours or anybody else's or whatever, it's just what I'm trying to say is God knows what's at the root. He knows where the root of these things comes from. We would say Sodom was destroyed because of homosexuality. No, it was idleness because idleness was even deeper. That was the, the root cause of the other things that sprang from it. The idleness, you know, the, you know, the old saying, the idle mind is a devil's playground, you know. That's what he saw as the root cause of what was going on with Sodom. Okay, so not that I think people are finger pointing or anything like that, but I think, I mean, I, I have to be honest with you, you know, in my life I've looked at people and thought stuff, so, you know, there it is. I'm, I'm putting it out there for you. I'm not perfect. I screw up and I, you know, think things I shouldn't think. But I remind myself, you know, come on, we don't really know what another person's going through and what really is at the basis of what their problem is. It might manifest in a certain way, but there's something underneath it that they may be struggling with. And of course, there's free will, right? I mean, we could get over, maybe my dad, you know, there were certain things he did, and I didn't do them. But that's because I exercised my free will not to do them, you know. So we have, we have a choice, too. But there are certain things that you're almost like, your nature is, you're going to veer one way or another, you know. And it's good to know that, because then you know, I'm not a freak, I'm not alone. This is human nature. This is what we're all going through. This is what we this is what Christ came to set us free from.